without further ado, Israel under the hood. Let's find out what that means. Please welcome Bill Levine from CanRx. Hey, morning everybody. It's been a fantastic conference so far, Saul. You're right, it's not like a medical conference. It's not like any other conference I've actually presented at. Yuval, unbelievable how far things have come. I'm, I'm amazed at what you're doing in terms of really not only leading Israel towards more quality, but leading the world. And I'm proud of the country and I'm proud of what you've accomplished. And uh, Dr. Hamiri, thank you very much for a perfect lead into what I want to talk and share with you today because what we're hearing is the quality standards need to be raised. On the other hand, we're dealing with an unbelievably complex plant that varies within the same genomic strain from two different greenhouses. In fact, it varies within the same plant when buds are um, harvested, let's say, from the bottom of the plant to the top of the plant. Well, how do we deal with this complexity and how do we make quality product from an unpredictable agricultural growth process. Okay, so let's start with understanding what we're actually dealing with. There are two different types of products. There's a botanical drug, and this is not new. The concept of making quality drugs and quality healthcare products from botanicals did not start with cannabis. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. What's our job to do is take modern science and make that a reality. So basically, what's the difference between a botanical drug versus a drug from botanicals? Well, a botanical drug is a whole plant essence. In other words, it's some form of an extract of a complex pharmaceutical material that comes from an agricultural product, the cannabis plant, and basically there are certain cannabinoids, certain terpenes, certain materials that are there, but there's a whole slew of other compounds which will have some impact on the activity spectrum. We call it here in the cannabis world entourage effect, but the reality is it's simply a synergistic chemical reaction between different plant materials, and this is standard. On the other hand, we have drugs from botanical origin, and we're all familiar with them. They're out there, they're approved, they're from the FDA. We have Paclitoxel, and we have Drunabinol from as THC, pure THC from the plant, they work, but are we getting the full benefit of the cannabis plant? Are we getting all the advantages that we can get from cannabis? And frankly, not just the clinical advantages, but are we getting the safety profile? Is taking pure THC for CINV, which it's approved for, the same safety characteristics as taking whole plant cannabis, which would be a botanical drug, and using that. So let's work through the process, because the truth is, the cannabis regulations all over the world are not drugs from botanical origins. That's a pharma development process. Standard, you can extract a synthetic molecule, or a molecule, you can synthesize it, you can extract it, but it's not the cannabis regulations that we're dealing with. We're dealing with botanical drugs. So what our job is, to take the complexity that Dr. Hamiri described and using the quality standards that would be, give you predictable products, what we want to do is understand how the cannabis product is affecting the body for that specific disease. Two, we need to control the optimal cannabinoid profile. Don't forget, the complexity here is unending. It varies between year to year, plant to plant, greenhouse to greenhouse. It's unending. We have to define some profile or some range of activity with which we can anchor onto so that we can get a predictable product every single time. And we have to correlate that profile together with specific diseases and not get um, sort of lost in the pathway of the complexity of the plant. The second thing is we need to design a controlled system. How do I get you the same product every single time on a predictable level so that we don't have problems like that autism patient that, where they were being described? We can't afford that. These are healthcare products. This is medical cannabis. This has to stand by patient care standards because those patients are sometimes us um, and people we love. And so we also need to develop, it's, it's not one dosage system 
for one patient. We need to give a variable dosing system with, with, with certain ranges that patients can use and understand what the effect they're going to get. Well, this is not new, as I said. So the company that I represent, Kenrix Technology, is a subsidiary of Izun Pharmaceuticals. Our, our ethos is we make botanical drugs. We've already had four FDA-approved products, three EMA-approved products, soon four. We've got over 68 patents. We ca carry the ISO 9001, 13485, and 17025 for cannabis. We have our own in-house R&D teams. We have our own in-house regulatory council and, and, and team and clinical trials. And we've done trials, frankly, all over the world using botanical drugs, FDA approved. Our areas of focus in Izun are chronic wound care, which we just got an FDA approval actually two weeks ago, oncology support, oral care, and women's health care. Canrex is a subsidiary of Izun, as I said, and basically we have two focuses, or foci, excuse me. <laughs> um, when we're looking at drugs of botanical origin, in other words, a pure, cannabinoid removed from the plant, either synthesized or extracted, and used for a clinical treatment of some type, that's Canrex Pharma. That's a pharmaceutical product. We engage the FDA, we engage the EMA. There are clear sailing rules as to how to get from point A to point B, things that you need to accomplish. It's clear. It's very expensive, it's very long, but it's very predictable. On the other hand, Kenzun focuses on the area of botanical drugs. That's our area where we focus on medical marijuana, but we still need to keep the area or the focus on getting quality healthcare products to that patient on a consistent basis. Okay, and now we're dealing with, as you know, and you've heard this now a couple of times already this morning, a plant with over 140 bioactive cannabinoids and many multiple bioactive terpenes and other molecular entities that are there in that plant, and we haven't fully defined their impact on that patient. At the same time, there are hundreds, probably more. 81, I think they mentioned just in Israel. What about the rest of the world? And huge numbers of little geographical areas where they have new genomic uh, cannabis, material, cannabis material, which is, uh, they're, they haven't even begun to be researched. And inside each of those strains, thousands of different cannabinoid profiles, a huge amount of anecdotal and often correct information as to the impact of that plant on different diseases, ranging from diabetes, glaucoma. It's not the same molecules. molecules. P PTHD, these are, not the, the, uh, these are not the PTSD, these are not the same molecules. So the point is, how do we move forward, okay? Well, what we do in the botanical drug industry, and we did not invent the process, we take a, a, an array of different cannabinoid profiles, different terpene profiles, in pre-designed combinations, organically coming from the plant. We can play with it scientifically, but there has to be something within a certain range that actually represents the full organic cannabis. We put it through different throughput assays, which are predictive for specific diseases. So in our focus is basically pain, neurodegeneration, which would encompass an enormous array of different diseases, ranging from Alzheimer's to Parkinson's, et cetera, inflammation, and uh, sleep. Now you'll get different readouts, as you saw in the last lecture. Some of them will be toxic, okay? Some of them will be inactive goes up to active and highly potent. Now remember, going from active to highly potent does not necessarily mean that you're not going to, that you're gonna, not gonna get a better effect from the activity one. You know, it's highly potent in a cell culture is not necessarily 100% predictive of a, th of, a, of a, let's say, a comprehensive clinical effect. So we have to take this through the full development process. On the other hand, understand that toxicity is not necessarily just killing cells. It may represent a very active pharmacological compound in another area. So what we do is we define different cannabinoid profiles, and clearly it can get much more extensive than this. We then create the surrogate markers. This, in this case, it's an inflammation assay called NF-kappa B, but that, that's not the point. And then we'll get different readouts based on different cannabinoid profiles. And in that, we're not taking those cannabinoid profiles out of the entourage effect. This remains 
a controllable entourage effect, okay, that we want in there. And what we'll do is we'll take those optimal profiles, or let's call them lead candidates that we received from the screening, and we'll, desi we'll, we'll, we'll design what we want to have as the optimal healthcare product that we want to result in. So what we want to have is a rapid onset. Hey, nobody really wants to wait two or three days till they see the effect, or two or three hours if they're in pain. You want to have control duration. You want to know that when you take a medication, you're not going to be out for the whole weekend you spent away. You want it to be safe. It has to be easy to use. And you want to have some form of personalized dosing. In other words, they need to give some variability to that patient who he knows that when he takes it this way, he gets this effect. But when he doubles the dose, he'll get that effect. You need to give the patient, especially in botanical drugs, some form of control. So let's take a look at the market. What is the market telling us? What are the users of cannabis telling us? Well, 80% of the people who are using cannabis, and I think Yuval alluded to it and wondered what he's saying, inhalation is pretty standard. Most of our data that we have from using of cannabis today comes from inhaled cannabis. Okay, it doesn't come from extracts, it comes from inhaled cannabis. And we don't want to throw that anecdotal data out. We want to use that data. So we have 80% of the people who are using it still, even though there's edibles and beverages and others available, and we want to stay with that. Inhalation is 80% of the market. What we want to do is make inhalation predictable, because that's critical. So what we do here is something very unique. We actually combust or vaporize the cannabis pen. We take, it's a different extraction concept, but we like it because it's 100% controllable. And we know exactly what we're getting at on a predictable basis. So what we do is we basically combust the cannabis, in other words, it's like smoking, or we vaporize the cannabis, okay? We take the vapor that we've created, the gas that we've created, and we recapture it into a soluble form, okay? So in a sense, you can have smoke, cannabis smoke in a dosable form, okay? In a 100% predictable way. Okay, which captures the optimal cannabinoid profile based on the history of use in, of cannabis. Okay, so we get an optimal entourage control. We get the actual inhaled molecular fingerprint. Okay, we get to use a pulmonary delivery system, an aerosol or an inhaler. It's safer, it's faster, and it's more convenient. And it's, we don't have the carcinogens associated with the smoke. They're cleaned out of the system. So if you look at this, what's cool about this is different variations of cannabis, high THC, high CBD, and a blend, but this is actually <laughs> liquid cannabis smoke, okay? It doesn't exist in the world. It's going, to be, it's going to exist now because it's the most predictable way to give you a medication in a fast way, and I'll show you. Okay, now what we can do further with this is take those, that liquid and go through a special, pro, which we've developed, a special protein binding system, which makes the material 100% water soluble and 100% bioavailable. What does that mean, bioavailability? It's something we need to understand. Think about when you smoke a joint. You light the end, you inhale the smoke, you basically, and you, uh, expire, not right away, <laughs> but when that half of your dose is coming out of your mouth or your nose, okay, how much are you getting in? How much of that material is bioavailable? It's very unpredictable, but yet if we can get the benefits of smoking with an inhalation or a vapor, we've captured the benefits of both systems, okay? The water solubility and the protein binding, what they do is they make it very easy to deliver. We can actually do a lung delivery, which is not usually the case for hydrophobic compounds like the cannabinoids. That's why they have to come in either in smoke. You can't just spray THC into your lungs. It, doesn't do you, it won't do you any good. But you, you can take it in in smoke when it's in the entourage effect, and you can take it in in our inhalation systems. Okay? And this is basically cannabis smoke, powdered, fully water-soluble cannabis smoke, 
Okay? This is what we do. We could take the, pow- we take the powder, we put it into a dry powdered inhaler. You basically inhale the product, a very predictable dosing, 100% bioavailable because it goes right into the bloodstream, and, it, it, and I'll show you some documentation for that. Or in the liquid, we do that for an aerosol delivery. Now, here's what's cool. Basically, what we develop through this technology is the ability to control the dose, control the material, which should have come first, but I'm in pain. I don't want to wait 45 minutes till I get pain relief. I get, through inhalation, pain relief in 10 minutes. I get full drug effect in 10 minutes. I want to go to sleep. I don't want to take a pill an hour before and wake up 40, you know, five, six hours later groggy. I want to have a controlled dose. I want to be asleep in 10 minutes, and I want to know that I'm going to have a full restful night. That's what we need to deliver, and that's what we can. But the beauty of this also is we can control through this system the duration. We can give you a longer and more potent acting effect. And these are pharmacodynamic trials. In other words, these these are the effect of the medication. This is not the bloodstream content. This is actually the response of the animals to the medication. Okay, I'm getting uh, signals. So therefore, what we did is we met our requirements. Rapid onset, control duration, safe. It's basically cannabis smoke. Easy to use and personalized dosing. An inhaler delivering a precise dose of optimal cannabinoid profiles that's basically smoke. So we have a smoking alternative approach giving you the full spectrum of cannabinoids. It does not deteriorate, it does not degenerate. The shelf life is enormously long. It's easy, fast, and efficient manufacturing. And it's a formulatory platform for lots of different oral delivery systems, transdermals, and lots of other systems. I want to take one other minute because I just couldn't resist. What's going on today, I went to high school in the late 70s. Think of where we are now versus what we were doing then. Uh, It's unbelievable. I mean, it's really, maturation of society at the same time as a merging of science and, and cultures. So where are we going? Okay, well, the current regulations are talking about botanical drugs from cannabis. They're not relating to drugs from botanicals. What GW Pharma is doing with Epidolux, two minutes, no. is not, but not cannabis. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, Second of all, you can't draw analogies from whole cannabis information, anecdotal information about whole cannabis being effective, for example, in diabetes, to certain specific compounds. You've got to prove that, but it's not understood from the beginning. Uh, Synthetic cannabinoids are not part of the cannabis track. You want to use a synthetic cannabinoid or something that's impacting on the um, endocannabinoid system, that's not cannabis. That's a pharmaceutical development project which you want to go forward and it comes all the risk and all the uh, um, costs of the development. I think this has been addressed by your canicopia. We need to change the GAP, the CGMP. This, I should have given you this slide, Yuval. <laughs> this is more, more or less what you've done already, so I'm behind the scene here, uh, behind the uh, times. Uh, we're going to need clinical evidence. No more of this bullshit. We need to know we're getting a good product. You know, there'll be different levels of clinical evidence, but we need it. And cannabis, I personally believe, will eventually be rescheduled. So, the future is bright, the market's growing, but the standards and quality will need to improve. So thank you very much. Bill Levine, thank you.